For some people, finding a partner in life can be difficult. For others, it's almost impossible. Ten years ago, a small factory in California began making an alternative partner. Each is tailor-made to suit every taste. There are now 3,000 real dolls across the world, providing some owners with the love and companionship that real women cannot. Currently, I'm living with my parents. It's a little embarrassing. I think there is definitely a sense of disappointment. We're living in each other's pockets. I mean, it's the sort of problem that's like brought to the fore literally every other day. I think um, the thing my father finds really difficult about my relationship with Shichan is the fact that she's not alive. You know, she's not a human being. He sees it as unnatural and strange, and uh, he's the sort of person to whom strange is something to be avoided, something alien. It's all well and good if you're creeped out by dolls, but, you know, I have to live with a person who is creeped out by them. So, <laughs> a bit of cla sometimes clashes occur. As a result, Shi chan spends like 99.9% .9 of her time in my room. Yo. All right. Woohoo, we have the place to ourselves. This is probably a, a good gauge of when I'm happy. Um, being really alone, but with her, you know, is a good sense of happiness. A good, solid, happy time would be like when I'd be in bed with her, not actually having sex, but just like lying next to her and appreciating her, especially like in the really early daylight, just being able to see her, you know, looking at me, regarding me, that sort of thing, and me doing the same back. It's the difference between being alone and lonely. Being alone is one thing. I don't mind being as alone at all. However, I cannot stand being lonely. And it's just that's something that more people, I would hope, would understand that that's why idolaters have their dolls. Kissing her is really interesting because this is the one thing that I really like about like real dolls as opposed to a lot of the Japanese dolls with the exception of a couple. Basically, uh, real dolls have mouths that open and uh, this tends to freak people out when they first see it. But she actually has a removable tongue. This is one of three tongues that uh, Shichan actually has. Um, there's another one that's curved. I can't even rem remember why I have a that one, but uh, the one she originally came with when she was shipped in 2000 was straight and it didn't have like as much detail. It's actually redder, but um, they're kind of fun. When she first came into my life, it was sex, 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 sex. And now it's just tapered off to the where it's just like we're just there for each other. We're always there for each other. So she's an anchor. Shichan is an anchor to me, because it's just like, I know what to expect with, with women. You don't really get that. Each doll costs around £4,000, and for those able to afford it, the dolls are worth every penny. For some, money can buy you love. That's 
is my 48th scale F4 Phantom in its Vietnam War colours. It's, uh, I think that's my best model actually. It's my favourite airplane. And uh, I had a very pleasant morning in bed with uh, Virginia. So we should go and see what I think she's sleeping it off now. She's uh, yeah, she's still asleep. And that's of course her sleeping face. That's one thing I had to do was change her face from the eyes open to the eyes closed face. She just lies there. They're very static. Uh, they just don't react at all. But if you don't mind that, they're good fun. They're certainly better than going without any female company at all. Well, as the nearest I ever got to having a real girlfriend uh, was this woman that I knew for several years, actually. But uh, yeah, she's um, she was older than me, but very uh, very attractive, and she kept fit. She went to dance lessons and so on, and uh, and I, I she told me she was actually in the uh, the Rens, the Women's Royal Naval Service, but. Unfortunately, she didn't have her uniform still uh, by the time I met her, because I did ask. But there you go. And yeah, we haven't, I haven't seen her since, which is a bit of a shame, really. Right, that's her lipstick done. Fifty-year-old Everard works as a computer technician and has spent much of his life living alone in the south of England. It's a thing that's always bugged me why I'm just treated as an outsider. And it is, just some people just react to me and I've not even said anything. It's just my appearance. Although I'm in a, in a place where there's some attractive looking women around, they're all unobtainable, as far as I can tell. But having my real dolls at home makes it, you know, it's uh, not so bad. You know? so I can get back home and I've got my women there. Since getting his dolls, Everard has become an avid photographer. Smile for the camera. I have a, an insatiable thirst for beautiful women of different types. You know, one doll is not enough. It's, you know, if I have one, then I, want, I see, see others and I want them as well. It's what real dolls are about when they just look so real. It's because their attention is directed. The fact that Rebecca is looking at something she's reading and Louise is looking down at the same thing while she's leaning in a more or less realistic way. The photos give the dolls a life. They're almost like family photos. It makes them seem more real to me. Okay, so that's a nice little picture. Everard's mother, Kathleen, was the last person he lived with. She died 11 years ago after a long illness. And that's a room uh, with my mother's things in it, pretty much as they were in the nursing home when she died. And uh, so we've kept it ever since then. It's just, you know, just preserved, really. 
just for memories, really. Yeah, I used to take her to the beach at weekends and holidays. And that's, um, you know, I pushed that wheelchair miles and miles. Don't spend much time in here, really. I just sort of look to see, oh yeah, everything's in its place. And check the, you know, I check that her clock is correct and her watch. Not that she needs it, but I just try and keep everything as it should be. Helps me uh, remember, uh, I suppose, remember it as when she was alive. Uh, and I think it's just, uh, you know, it's a business that we, some of us anyway, don't really know how to cope with when somebody dies, you know, when your mother dies particularly. It doesn't seem to quite make sense. She would probably have preferred it if I had a real woman, but uh, I think she would rather that I had real dolls than just remain completely without any female company at all. Because they, you know, the dolls have improved my quality of life uh, immensely, really. My dad, he left when I was about, I think I was like six months or a year old. I have maybe one or two memories of him, but one of them is like he was in a garage throwing knives at the door. Damn, that's the only memory I got of him was when I was a baby. And basically my mom raised me. I found that relationships with humans are almost temporary. And a lot, a lot of people think I'm cold and sensitive saying it, but everybody that's listening to this, think about when you was a five-year-old or six-year-old kid. Think about the friends you got. How many of them are still friends today? See, I'm, I guess I'm different than most people. I can bond with in, 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 inanimate objects. I've had that poster for over 20-some years, that car and garage I've had for all my whole life. Uh, I, I just get attached to physical stuff. Uh, this is Patricia. This is a girl I had living with me about 10 years ago. And uh, she took this about a week or two weeks before she left. And look at the date. It's like November 19th. So she left about two weeks later. Which, were, which was really kind of cool because it saved me from buying a lot of Christmas presents. So I spent the money on myself instead. So the nicest thing she ever did for me is she left. The reason I know I can't get a real girlfriend over here, or, hu or I couldn't get a real a human girlfriend over here is because of the way I look. I got bad skin, I got bad teeth, I'm too thin, but I know it's because of the way I look. One time I met this girl at a, at a friend's house, and we talked a while. She seemed pretty nice. So I asked her out, she said, okay. She said, but I don't have a phone. She said, I'll call you. All right, so I wrote my name, name and number down on a piece of paper and gave it to her. So about a week goes by, she called me up on a Saturday night. She says, Gordon, what are you doing tonight? I said, I ain't, got, I ain't doing that. What, what's going on? She said, well, I got a date tonight. Can you come over and watch my son for me? I was like, I don't think so. From what I've seen, the ones, all the ones I've met, they just want to use somebody, you know. I'm convenient. You know, I used to be easy before I got Ginger and Kelly, you know. Oh, yeah, I used to be everybody's doormat, but I'm not anymore. It's all about what I want, what I want to do now. And that's the way it will be. When he's not working at a local factory, Gordon enjoys spending his time at home. An only child, he grew up in rural Virginia. He's never left. This is a Glock. 40 caliber. Needs to be cleaned. See all the dust in it. 
need to clean the thing. And a Tech 9 millimeter. I used to carry this around. But it's big and bulky. And this holds 32 bullets. Fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. And then this is a, this is a, uh, a Mac 90. It's basically like a cheap version of AK-47. Three guns, two girls. Oh, I don't like thongs, high heels, or any of that weird, any of that stuff. It's a turnoff to me. Anything that makes uh, what, what most people consider uh, sexy or erotic is a turnoff to me because it makes a makes a woman look like look like she's been had by a hundred different guys. I don't want that. And, you know, it'd be like going to a going to it'd be like going to a restaurant and somebody putting a piece of meat in their mouth and spitting it back on a plate and handing it to you. Here, you want this? Like, oh hell no. This is a two-handed broadsword. Mom got me this for Christmas about 14 years ago. She always gets me good stuff. I would say, I'd say, for me, the sex is better because in the back of my mind, we're having sex with a real woman. It's like, damn, I hope I don't get her pregnant, or I hope she ain't got no disease. The dolls are worth everything to me. Yeah. I'd rather live with them in a cardboard box in a frozen terrain than live in the biggest castle on, on the planet with, without them. I'll put it that way. Because as good as the sex is with them, the peace of mind is even better. Knowing that all the lies and all the deceit and all the times I've been used, it'll never happen again. And that's peace of mind to me. Everything's here the way I like it. I do whatever I want. Don't answer nobody. It's, it's, it's almost like being your own God, living in your own world. I mean, the only time I got to do anything I don't want to do is when I'm at work. I got to answer to my boss then. That's just 40 hours a week. I go out to the store once a month, get my supplies, come back. That's it. Other than that, I'm here doing what I want, doing my thing. Like say, she's the heaviest. She weighs 100 pounds. Then hooked in the back of her neck, right there. Let me hook it in. I mean, 99% of the people out there probably think I'm crazy, which is fine with me. But it's probably one or two will probably agree with what I, what my lifestyle. And they should try it. They might like it. It might work. And if you have, and if you know, if you're my age, 39 years old, and you haven't found a, 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 a human companion yet, you probably never will. So if you get a real doll and don't work out, I mean, you really not, haven't lost anything. I mean, you you haven't got, you didn't have nothing to begin with. What's gonna happen to Ginger and Kelly after I die? Well, I thought about it and I thought maybe I'll have them buried with me. Because after all, I'm pretty small and they're not very big. And I think we'd all fit in there right now. Probably a slightly oversized coffin. Then we could all turn to dust together. That'd be pretty nice. sell to Australia, Japan, China, Switzerland, Korea, Spain, everywhere in Europe. We get about 400 orders a year and we ship about seven dolls a week. I've had people ask us for pregnant real dolls. And I think the weirdest one and that kind of freaked me out was the guy that wanted the 80-year-old looking real doll. Pubic hair is an option. They can have it shaved, they can have it natural, they can have it trimmed and in various colors that we offer. Oh my Lord, we had a man one time that he wanted it up to the belly button and all down through the back and it was, we, we just sort of drew the line on that one. We, we sold him the uh, pubic hair 
patches that we have and told them, go for it. You just put it anywhere you want. I've had customers say to me, you know, I'm, I'm 50 years old and I'm losing my hair and I'd never be able to get a real woman that would look like this. But the real doll can give me that. And she will love me no matter what. Most people that say that they wouldn't ever have sex with a doll actually would. I am very um, flattered that my dolls have such an emotional place in certain people's lives. Those are the ones that I feel the best about, you know, that I've actually changed their life for the better. Certain people benefit from these dolls. You know, the same way that certain people benefit from uh, insoles in their shoes, you know. It's not, everybody doesn't have problems with their feet, but some people do. And everybody doesn't have social interaction problems, but some people do. Some guys cannot talk to a girl. And I certainly think that having sex with a piece of rubber that's exactly shaped like and feels like a woman is better than never having sex. And for them, it's... It's enough, you know, they're happy. They, they go to work and they come home and they're excited to see their doll. And the food bills are way cheaper. I wonder if it might be worth also taking along some hairspray. It might be a bit big, the can of hairspray. Let's have a look. I don't know, would that fit in a bag? Yeah. Okay, she's got hairspray in a bag. And in this little compartment is her little bottle of perfume. Put a little bit of that on her. There we go. Got a badge for her, just so that people don't try rescuing her from a car or any other situation thinking she's a real person who's, I don't know, gone catatonic or something. <laughs> That's all she needs on a, on a summer's day, I think. Yeah. Well, my self-image is based on the fact that I fly hang gliders. That's what sets me apart from the common man in the street. That's a real gale. I would expect women to naturally be attracted to the kind of guys who do exciting things. Whatever you fly, you could try and impress women with that, and uh, and they'll try and look interested and impressed. But actually, all they want is some bloke with a pint of beer in one end and a pack of fags in the other, who watches uh, soap operas, I guess. Uh, they're just not impressed. It, it's um, completely baffling to me the whole thing. So yeah, I mean, I here I am, a superhero, but it's deemed irrelevant. So, there you go. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's just me and dolls for the rest of my life, as far as I can see. But there are worse things in life than uh, living with dolls, really. 
like living alone. I mean, what would I do if I didn't have my dolls? It's tough to choose. This is really nice, look at this. I like that though. So you haven't seen Heidner here like a lingerie section? No, I haven't either. But you do have some good stuff though, I like this. I lead a fairly happy life. You know, I'm very involved with a lot of clubs. I have some great friends. You know, I have some good hobbies. This one here is fairly inexpensive, right? See what I'm talking about? If you don't pay a lot for a wig, that's what you get. But between you and me and a fence post, I'd be crazy enough to be looking. Somebody to share this world with, you know, and I am. In the meantime, I'm having the most fun that I can. And I think that's the right way to do it. I honestly do. I think I found a better one. If there's anything about these dolls where you, where you spend money, it's on the wigs more realistic looking, which means more realism, better sex, every time. You can have Harley Davidson motorcycles as a hobby. You can have windsurfing as a hobby. You can have owning a sailboat as a hobby. You can have sex as a hobby. Yeah, she's a cute one, isn't she? We have spare pubic hair in case the pubic hair in the doll wears out or needs to be replaced. This pubic hair came from Sweden. It's actual real pubic hair. Evidently, the Swedes don't have a problem donating their pubic hair for money. I actually would like a girl in my life that knew about me every, every way and was okay with it. I would like that, actually. I would. Unlike most doll owners, 48-year-old Texan Mike Kelly does have a girlfriend. Her name is Jody, and though their relationship has just begun, they seem well matched. I would never use the word marriage or anything because that scares men off, and actually at this point in my life it scares me off. I could see it being long-term with Michael. I met Mike through the internet. And I liked what he had to say. He said he was open-minded, which is somebody I needed. And I inferred in my introduction that I was open-minded, and that's what he needed. And he said, the first time he met me when he saw my stud, he says, ah, yeah, she's open-minded, okay. This is a good beginning. <laughs> this is a good beginning. Jody is uh, intelligent, um, talented. Fun to be with, you know, has many of those qualities. There is a possibility that Jody and I could have wedding bells in the future. Yes, I would give up the dolls for the right woman. I could do it. The things I really liked about mannequins, I'd have to say, were their beauty and their stoicism. You know, there's a very, I mean, they're artistic, obviously, but then there's the erotic factor, I guess you could say. It's a photo of me as a youth. So, but it's just a still beauty that, like, you know, is, un is it's, it's incorruptible, I guess you could say. I remember as a child, one of the things that did happen is that uh, I and my mother had gone downtown via bus to like Winkleman's or whatever store or whatnot. She was trying on clothes and while she was trying on clothes, I was apparently found talking to a mannequin lass in a tennis skirt. Um, no idea really why when he stopped to think about it, but uh, I guess that's just like an innate sense of like, you know, my fascination and interest in like synthetic humans even back at an early age <laughs> so it's kind of interesting 
After living together for six years, Dave Katz's doll is now in need of repair. Her limbs are, well, they're loose. Basically, over the course of time, you know, a doll's limbs will become very loose and floppy. Shi Chan is about to embark on a 5,000 mile round trip to see a specialist doll doctor on America's west coast. She'll be away for three weeks, and it'll be the longest they've ever been apart. I'm missing her already, I can tell you that. Uh, that's, that's no lie. But it's just, I guess, a reconciliation that my sweetie is actually uh, going to be away for quite some time. But then, you know, that's also bolstered by the fact that she'll be back and in uh, really good condition. There's an obvious sadness going on because uh, we'll be missing each other. I guess I'm getting used to it, but I guess it'll really hit me once she's actually in the crate and on the van. She'll be sat in that crate for several days. Yes, I will be alone. It's uh, something I really don't like to think about, but that's what it's going to be. You're safe, sweetie. I love you. I've never had anyone to say goodbye to where it's been such an issue. So. When she returns, it will be pretty much like a second honeymoon. Some of the things that I do are minor, small cuts, replace teeth, replace the vagina lips. Those are small jobs. It looks destroyed to me. Shit. Life. And I'm running out of vaginas. Sex in itself is almost like a violent act. But, you know, the dolls are made for it. They can handle a lot of physical abuse. Real doll expert Slade Firo has been repairing dolls for 10 years from his home in California. Dolls come from far and wide for some much needed care and attention. Love it when they fit together like that. Dave Katz's doll has just arrived. Yep, just like I thought. Not packed well, just hanging there by our threads. When that doll shows up here in a crate, I have a very serious sense about a job that needs to be done. I have a responsibility of an object that somebody spent a lot of time, effort, and money to get, and I want to make sure that it's cared for properly. She doesn't look too bad. She doesn't look bad at all. She's fine. She's got a little bit of work, but the doll's in good shape. Looks good. Better than I expected. She's pretty, too. I give great care in its handling. I don't give a lot of emotional attachment to it. I like a lot about it. I've always had little 
G.I. Joes as a kid and Barbie dolls and human figures and model kits and things like that. And, and this was just a really different step in all that same direction. So she's just got some, some loose joints, you know, like in her elbows, very loose and her shoulders are loose, her knees. But these are really pretty relatively easily solved problems or issues just with a, a small incision. We'll find the joint. I think that's it right there. Um, and I'll just put like a, a socket on each side and we'll tighten that down and fill the hole. Should be good to go. Looks like she's got a teeth thing, you know, she can probably get some, a new set of teeth and, and probably even some lowers. Oh, nice. Whoa, there's a picture of Matt and Kim. My girlfriend, Rebecca, you know, of four years, um, when we first started dating, it made her uncomfortable. It made her uncomfortable physically. Uh, her body, she felt, didn't look like that or wouldn't look like that. And so the dolls themselves are intimidating to women. It was hard on her, I think. I think it was hard on her. I was jealous of the fact that he was around them and I was looking at them as these just perfect creatures and I'm looking, I'm like, okay, I don't look like her. I'm not gonna look like her. To me, that's not reality in my world. That's not what I look like. That's not what I'm gonna look like. That's not what people I know look like. I don't know, the jealousy thing, I think I've gotten over. Um, but still, just looking at them, I, I've come to terms with the fact that they're fake. I don't think he glues on pubic hair and goes, oh, God, I want to lick that pussy right now. I don't think that he, I, I don't think that he thinks that way. He, I don't think he, he thinks that way about women in general. So it's not something that I'm jealous over by any means. I've had sex with a couple of dolls. Over the years that I have worked with them, there have been a couple of dolls that I've had that were, you know, amazing, amazing. This hundred pound doll came to life. Like, it's pushing back. It's not just like, you know, I'm pushing on it, but all of a sudden it's starting to push back and it's creating motion and friction and the weight of the product and how it behaves in this manner is very stimulating. It was an amazing thing, you know, very lifelike, very realistic, very odd. But it's just a doll, you know very high form of masturbation. Okay, that's a done day. When she gets to Dave Cat, she's still gonna be sitting in her chair. Welcome to Real Doll Heaven. Okay, this is Wendy. This is Sandy, Misty, Christy, Jazzy, Britty, Lexi. This is Lexi, my number one doll. I like this doll very much. I actually use this one quite often, to tell you the truth. I like it. She's in good shape. Yep, yeah, looks real good. Over the last five years, Mike's doll collection has grown to the point where he no longer has space to store them. The relationship he has with his dolls is confusing for new girlfriend Jody. I don't know to what extent these dolls play in Michael's life. Michael has said that he uses the dolls when he's not in a relationship that they're for masturbation only. And so now that he's with me, I think he has reiterated that several times, that he won't use them. I think Michael might not be telling me something, and maybe he's afraid to. Uh, she starts to smell like fish. So you learn to clean them after a while. 
One clean doll. I'm a master at hiding my dolls. Doll owners may be looked at as perverts, and I don't want to be seen as a pervert. The Catholic Church Next Door has a program for sex. People are addicted to sex, they get them addicted to Jesus instead. Such a deal. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow. Hey, I'm thinking sexual sauce right now. Okay. Off goes her bra. You know, the bottom line is, if I wake up at 3 in the morning, which I have, you know, with a raging heart on, I can go in the garage, grab a doll, throw in her bed, go for it. You can't necessarily do that with a woman. She's a person. She has a mind. You have to ask. And she has a right to say no. With a doll, the sex may be awesome, and it is. But still, they, they provide zero companionship, absolutely none. Have somebody to talk to, have somebody to have dinner with, somebody to share a movie with. You're going to want those things, and the dolls give you none of that. Jody and I have reached a point in our relationship where we should be sharing more of who we truly and really are. You know, what makes us tick, what makes us go. I think we have it all. She looks good. If she's the right woman, why wouldn't she be okay with the dolls? Oh, I, my, my birthday would be a perfect time to test that boundary. She's coming over, so she's going to discover the true extent of my hobby. Dave Catton and his doll have now been apart for over three weeks. Shi Chan has had all her joints tightened and enjoyed a full makeover. One force is going to get this thing open in the next couple of seconds. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome home, sweetie. <laughs> it's uh it's like she's brand new. <laughs> mm, I still love her. <laughs> Every now and again I'll still make some sort of half-hearted attempt to date organic women, but then I realize it's pretty much a fool's errand. I prefer knowing the security that Shi Chan provides me because there's no, there's no variables, there's no bizarreness that may or may not occur. You know, there's always a constant. I like things constant, and uh, you can't really get much more constant than a doll. Mike's girlfriend Jody has just arrived for his birthday party. Mike, it's me. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Right. She's about to meet his dolls yes. for the first time. Oh, look at this. This is sweet. Well, let's open the wine. Bring it on. I can handle it. Tell me exactly what's going on. Let me be the judge if I can deal with it or not. I gotta know, you know. I don't like being in the dark. I don't like secrets. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Michael. Oh, my God. Michael. Is this it? Are these the two you have? No, there's more. There's more? Yeah. How many do you have? Eight. How many? Eight. Eight? You have eight? Over how many, how, how long, a period of time? Oh, I have no idea.
Do you use all eight? Not at one time. <laughs> Be pretty tired, wouldn't I? Uh, you can see it now. <laughs> I need a beer. Sure. <laughs> so how often do you... Oh, like once a week. Really? Yeah. I like that he talked to me about it. It's just a part of who he is. And I don't have a problem with this whatsoever. Because I know when I come over, it'll be all about me. And I'm perfectly fine with it. I already made a wish. I applaud him. Good for him. Good for him. But if Michael said he preferred sex with dolls over women, I would break it off. You know, I'll move on because I do require, at this point in my life, I require more. Seems to be that things are going to go quite well now. We get along very well as friends. We get along very well as sexual partners. A week after Mike's birthday party, Jody decided to end their relationship.